lot with maths at GCSE. I once got 16% on a practice paper. So, how did I end up studying A-level maths, getting over 95%, an A-star grade, and coming top of my school year? Hi everyone, welcome back to Trees and Turtles. I'm Imogen. In this video, I'm showing you how I went from being a kid who was failing maths to acing it. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to do that. It's down there, guys. Uh, and let's get into the video. Okay, some background. I was not naturally good at maths. I was homeschooled, my GCSEs worked on a longer time scale than is normal, I was bad at maths for years, I took my GCSE in it when I was 17, which is the summer before I went to sixth form, and you usually do GCSEs when you're 16, so I was a year late, and all of that stuff. At this point I've been practicing it for like four years with limited success, I didn't really understand past papers, I didn't really understand how to revise, honestly, mathematically, I was just a mess. Um, all I knew was to do the practice questions in my textbook, like, over and over, and one day, right near the exam, I went from hating maths to loving it, and I can't really explain why, but for no apparent reason, I wanted to do it at A-level. However, to get into the maths course at my sixth form, I had to achieve a grade 7. The top grade is grade 9, and the lowest is a grade 1, but uh, 7 is equivalent to an A, so I had to get a grade 7. Somehow, I did manage to score a grade 7, but now I made it onto the A-level maths course, I was surrounded by peers who were all better at maths than me, and or had done better at GCSE. Remember, I just scraped on, right? Um, so I felt I had everything to prove, so I put everything into it. Um, I will put a disclaimer here that I went to a really good school, and I was lucky with that, but again, I still did better than all of my peers, so listen to me anyway. Um, <laughs> so here's what I did. I talked to my teachers, so this is really important. Teachers are there to help you. Like, yeah, sometimes they don't have good intentions, but like, most of the time, like 95% of the time, they want to see you succeed, and it's literally their job. That is what they get paid to do. So talk to your teachers. Please, please, please talk to your teachers. Um, I promise they are human, and I promise they want to see you succeed. And also, um, teachers have a soft spot for students who work hard and if you are a student who works hard and who wants to do well in their subject that's going to flatter their ego a little bit and they are going to want to help you back so talk to your teachers okay I showed up early so I always made sure to show up like five minutes early to class if I could um, and this was a really good time to sort of like go over homework I'd get homework handed back and I'd be like oh I don't understand this can you tell me why you marked it like that and then they could go over it with me, or I'd say, look, this topic's not so great, can I talk to you about this? Um, because, you know, you show up early, you're there, they're there, um, it's a good time. It's a good time to ask questions, and it's a good time to just honestly show that you're willing and that you really want to learn. Okay, so I asked questions when I didn't understand something. In my second A-level maths class ever, I didn't get one of the first concepts, um, and it was thirds, I think, which is to do with square roots. Um, anyway, if you guys have done maths, you know what I'm talking about. And I told, I was sitting like close to the back, and I didn't have, a, I, I, told, I told myself this, right, right now you have a choice, you can get out of your comfort zone, you can risk looking silly, and you can ask for help, or you can sit here for two years, understand nothing, and fail. Um, and when I put it like that to myself, it seemed quite reasonable to ask a question. Fortunately for me, I did ask a question, did it feel scary? Yes. Um, did I look silly? No, not really. Um, did I understand it? Yes, I did. Did I fail? Absolutely not. Okay, so I made friends. One of my best friends, um, if you're watching this video, you know who you are because we did this, um, was in my class for two years running and we used to practice maths together and honestly, um, yeah, we just had a great time and we each taught each other stuff and honestly he probably taught me more than I taught him but um, yeah, we just had a great time. Um, so make friends in your maths class if you can, because I promise that not all, even if all the kids seem smarter than you, um, some of them are going to be kind, and um, you will get on with some people. So I turned in all my homework on time, and I looked at feedback. Like, if you're going to do homework, do it on time. Like, also that will make your teachers like you, because you know, if you don't turn in homework late, I guarantee that is a big plus point, because a lot of people turn in homework late, and it sucks. Don't be that person. So yeah, I turned in all my homework on time, there's no point doing that if you're not going to look at the feedback. So look at the feedback when it comes back, and see where you went wrong, and do better. <laughs> yeah, so I'm saying look at feedback. Okay, I did all the practice papers I could find. So I asked my teachers how to do well, I researched how to do well, 
and the answer came up again and again and again, practice, okay? And I promise that this is the single biggest thing you can do once you understand the concept, and sometimes even to understand the concept, is to practice. I did that like my life depended on it, seriously. I had a stack of papers, like past papers, up here, and I worked on them, and the pile went down this side and went up this side, I promise. It was like that. Um, sometimes digitally, sometimes in real life. Um, I just recorded my percentages each time. I ended up doing like each paper like four times and I got better percentages each time and then eventually I understood how to do the paper. Um, I understood every proof and I could get 100% or close to it. I read the mark schemes and explanations for the, how the solutions were marked as they were because sometimes I look at my, th my homework and I'd be like, why is it marked like that? I don't understand why that's wrong. So then I'd go and read the mark scheme and I'd be like, oh, that's how that theory applies to this problem and I wrote that instead of this theory, and that's how I got it wrong. So mark schemes are important. You have to know how to read them, but once you've read a few, then you'll get, again, it's practice. So practice reading the mark schemes, people. Um, what else? I gave myself less time for practice papers than was actually given. So if it was like an hour and a half, I'd give myself an hour. Um, I ended up finishing my final exams in about half the time allowed, and I spent the rest of the time going over my paper multiple times and checking it. So that gives you an edge in exams, like if you're faster than the average student, you've got more checking time and you've got more time to catch potential errors. You have to be good as well as fast because obviously you're just going to make more mistakes if you're fast and you rush it without knowing the theory. But if you're genuinely fast and you know the theory, um, then that gives you an edge. So in the final exam, I had two hours per paper. The first paper I finished in an hour, the second paper I finished in an hour and five minutes. So I had basically half the time still left to check it and it really paid off. So yeah, I read the mark schemes and explanations, we've been over that. Uh, I watched YouTube videos and I read and reread the textbook outside of school hours to supplement the explanations I was getting in class. To do well in A-level maths, just attending classes is not going to cut it, you have to do extra work and I just, I watched so many YouTube videos and I went over the textbook. I remember one Saturday morning I spent like two hours just reading the section on differentiation and every time I read it I understood a little bit more and it's those things that you just practice and you understand a bit more and it is satisfying so that's good and YouTube videos because you can see like worked examples in real time you can pause rewind you can have it explained to you as many times as you need honestly some of the explanations I probably went over like five or seven times but I understood them and I did well so there it is YouTube is a massive resource I used bad grades as motivation, so I remember in year 12 we did the February mock and my grade came back as 43% which was a C and I looked at this and I was like oh dear not good because this is a subject I'd chosen and my university application was relying in part on this subject and here I was kind of failing at it and I was just like no what do I do so we had these pieces of paper that we got our grades on, little pieces of paper, mine said 43 and so I decided I'm going to put this inside my calculator. So I took my calculator lid and I put it inside. And I kept it there for the next year and a half as motivation to do better. Every time I opened my calculator, I would see this 43% and I'd be like, oh, I'd better practice some more. I don't want to end up like that. So yeah, I used bad grades as motivation. Bad grades, they're just information. They're motivation. Um, like negative motivation, but it's still motivation and it still works. So yeah, I use bad grades as motivation, and I actually still have that piece of paper with 43% on it. It's almost got like sentimental value to me now. If I ever lose it, I'm going to be very sad, um, but I still have it. So yeah, 43%, it's um, a bad grade, but it's motivation. I took nothing for granted, so a lot of the time I kind of ignored grade boundaries, and I focused on percentages, because maths is a sort of black and white subject, you know. It's especially, well, less so as you get further on. Um, but, especially at A-level, it's wrong or it's right. Like, you can get a calculation wrong and you can score zero, or you can get it right and you can score 100%. So, the point was that I focused on percentages because I knew I could get 100% if I tried. Um, if I was getting less than 100 on tests, that was when I had something to work on, so I always had something to work on. Um, I never considered myself good at maths because I'd started out being terrible at maths. So I never considered myself good at maths when I, even when I was being predicted A stars, which happened um, at the start of year thirteen. Yeah, I was being, I went from like getting forty three percent mid year twelve. I worked really hard for those six months. 
Um, anyway, so I stayed hungry for more and I never really considered myself good at maths until I finished my entire A-level. And then I did think, okay, you're kind of good at maths. Um, I fell in love with maths. So I said at the start of this video that one day I just really, like, I just fell in love with maths. And it is beautiful. Like, proofs and algebra are really satisfying. Mechanics has practical applications, sometimes even a little bit satisfying. Even statistics, the most hated of the three, um, certainly in my school anyway, even statistics has very many practical applications across all sorts of disciplines. Um, and even though it's not as fun as pure maths, I find, it's actually the one that I use most in my degree now. And I don't really use pure maths or mechanics in my degree. And I miss both of them. But hey, I did statistics at A-level and it's definitely helped me in my degree. So I loved the subject overall, so of course I wanted to do well in it. It was a really good motivator. Honestly, taking maths was a gamble. I had really high ambitions for university. It was a challenging subject. I'd had a really shaky foundation in it. Um, and if I'd handled it wrong, it could have screwed up my university application. Um, at one point I was getting A's in geography and politics and a C in maths, and I was like, this is, this is not good, we've got, we got to do something here. But I ended up getting an A star in all three of them, so I just put more, more, much, much more work into maths. I just implemented all these steps, learned how to learn, honestly worked my ass off. So when my final grade came back, I got an A star, and um, I have my A-level certificate here, I'm going to show you. So here it is. Um, yep, there it is. It's my A star from AQA, that was our board. Um, so yeah, I'm not making it up. Um, we also got to look at our papers after the exam. So on my first paper, I scored 98%. On the second, I scored 95 So that averaged out to 96.5 overall. Um, hence why I put over 95 in the start of this video. In a conversation with one of, my, one of my teachers shortly afterwards, remember I talk to my teachers a lot? Yeah. Um, they told me I come top of the year, which I was quite surprised because obviously there are a lot of people who were really smart and probably people I would have guessed would have like ranked above me, but I came top of the year, which was a surprise to me personally. So it said a lot, but if I can do it, you completely can too. Remember back at the start of this video when I said I got 16% in a mock paper at GCSE? Yeah, I'm the same person. I just worked and I implemented all of these steps in the video. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like it and hit the subscribe button. Um, good luck in your A-level maths exams. You will do fantastically well, I'm sure. I'm very proud of you. I upload new productivity content every Monday, so stick around for that. Follow me on Instagram. It's in the description. I will see you next week. Okay, bye.